Welcome. NOAA has just issued its August 2019 Global Climate Report, and this video is a summary of that report, plus other climate-related issues from around the globe. In August, global temperatures were very near record highs. Globally, it was the second warmest August on record, with an, a temperature anomaly of 0.9 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. The land and ocean broke down slightly differently from one another. As usual, the land was uh, 1.1 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, and that put it in fourth place. The ocean was in first place with an anomaly of 0.8 degrees centigrade. The Northern Hemisphere uh, was the second warmest August on record at 1.1 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, and the Southern Hemisphere was fourth with a uh, anomaly of 0.7 degrees centigrade. That means overall we've had 415 consecutive months with temperatures above the 20th century average. Let's take a look at a map of how those temperatures were distributed around the globe. This is a temperature departure from average and that average is set by the time period from 1981 to 2010. Now this tends to confuse a lot of people, particularly like those of suspicious observers. But really it's quite simple. Overall, this indicated a 0.9 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average month, with an increase of 0 0.07 degrees centigrade over August of 2018, which is actually quite a large deviation. We have three cool areas, one in Western Canada, one in Western Russia, and one over Australia. We have six warm areas, off the coast of Alaska, Eastern Canada, most of Western Europe, South Africa, Eastern Siberia, and China. But I think the most interesting feature of this map is this cold patch of water off the Western coast of South America. Now that used to be warm sea and has changed to a, a cold pattern. That means I believe that we're exiting from an El Nino into ENSO neutral conditions and may be setting up a La Nina for late this year or early next year. We have to see about that, more on that later. There is nothing in the previous map that indicates whether a particular pixel is record high or record low. To do that you have to go to what is called a percentiles map and that is what this is. If you have a record cold pixel here it will show as dark blue if you have a record warm pixel, it will show as dark red. And as you can see, there are no record cold pixels here. There are only four much cooler than average pixels, compared with hundreds of much warmer than average pixels. There are 184 record warmest pixels, and that's why August of 2019 was the second warmest August on record. You can do pretty much the same thing by looking at the individual station records, and if you look at the daily averages, in August, there were 6,971 new record highs compared with 1,804 record lows. That's a ratio of nearly 4 to 1. Year to date, we have a similar picture with 58,946 new record highs and 33,718 new record lows. That's a ratio of nearly 2 to 1. So overall, the highs have it, so that means we still have a warming world. Here I've recorded month by month the ranking of each of the months over the last six years. And as you can see, August of 2019 came in second, tied with 2017 and 2015. But overall, 2019 is ranking up there with 2015 and 2017. And so probably uh, will become the second or the third warmest year on record, extending our run of five record warm years to six. While we might live at the surface, the conditions in the upper atmosphere are very important to us. And so for that we go to the satellite data, and I use two sources here, the University of Alabama Huntsville and Remote Sensing Systems. Now they have slightly different analysis techniques, so they get somewhat different temperatures, but this gives you an idea of what they're both seeing. In the lower troposphere, which is an average altitude of about four kilometers, uh, UAH found it was the fourth warmest August on record, whereas RSS found it was the third warmest August on record, uh, with an average increased rate of uh, temperature of 0.16 degrees centigrade per decade. 
The mid-troposphere uh, was the third warmest according to UH and second warmest according to RSS. And with an average increase in temperature of 0.12 degrees centigrade per decade. Again, warming. The stratosphere is different, it's cooling, and that's a unique signature of anthropogenic global warming. That altitude is about 17 kilometers. According to UAH, it was the ninth coolest. Uh, according to RSS, it was the 12th coolest. And their overall rate of decrease of temperature is 0.24 degrees centigrade per decade. Another important factor in climate is the amount of sea ice. This is the Northern Hemisphere sea ice extent, which is predominantly the Arctic sea ice. And you can see that it was the second lowest of all time. And we've had 18 consecutive years of below average sea ice in the Arctic area. At the other end of the world, we have the Southern Hemisphere sea ice, which is predominantly that sea ice around Antarctica. And that was at its fifth lowest level ever. Uh, and is the third consecutive year with below average sea ice. Let's take a look at the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In August of 2009, it was up to 410 parts per million. That compares with 407 parts per million last year. That's the blue curve on this picture. The black curve is the carbon dioxide equivalent of carbon dioxide plus all the other greenhouse gases such as methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, and the CFCs. At the moment, we don't have just 410 parts per million. We have the equivalent of 500 parts per million in our atmosphere. As I mentioned earlier, El Nino seems to have decayed away, and we're now in enso neutral conditions. According to the models, we are likely to remain that way until the spring of next year at the very least. A few models show us going into more La Nina-like conditions, but most of the models show us remaining here or going slightly back towards El Nino. Either way, it's very slow change, and so I doubt that it's going to have a major effect on our climate in the short term. Let's take a quick look at the US temperatures, where it was the ninth warmest August on record, with temperatures one degree centigrade above the long-term average. It was warmer in the west along the Gulf Coast and up the eastern seaboard with a cool patch in the middle. We have record temperatures in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and California. There were no record cold areas. In August 2019, there was about average rainfall over the whole United States. However, it wasn't evenly distributed. You can begin to see why the central part of the country had slightly cooler than average temperatures, because it was getting a lot of rain. Meanwhile, in the desert southwest in Southern California, Texas as well, uh, they were suffering from drought conditions. Let's update the tornado situation. At the moment we stand at 1,277 tornadoes in the United States, which is well above average, and with just 20 more tornadoes, we will exceed the normal yearly average for tornadoes. So finally, to summarize, let's take a look at some significant climate anomalies around the world. Hawaii had its second highest August temperature uh, on record. Um, the South Africans had their second warmest as well. Europe had its third warmest August, tying with 2015. Bahrain was at its fifth warmest August on record. Uh, and Asia as a whole had its eighth warmest on record. Uh, Australia is suffering from drier than average conditions. And I've already mentioned what happened with the sea ice, uh, both in the Arctic and the Antarctic. So that's what all the news that's fit to print about climate. Until next time, goodbye.